Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel Maison African Motives are still working on uh, engineering science and two working on revisions on heat. So we are still working on questions uh, that is pertaining heat. So we are given uh, the question from one of the question papers which is actually on question number seven. So if you are new guys, you can consider subscribing so that you won't miss any of the classes that we shall be having from Maison African Motives. Okay, so we can quickly rush through the question and see what we're given. Uh, the first part on 7.1, we're given to define specific heat capacity. Okay, so this one, guys, I have uh, actually given you the definition before. But still, uh, this is another question. So we can have this definition again, which is uh, the specific heat capacity. It is the quantity of heat needed or that is required so needed that is required to raise the temperature of one kg of a substance by one degree Celsius. so this is the actual definition that they need from uh, uh, view so you must uh, actually define uh, the specific heat capacity in this way or anything that is related to this way give two examples on 7.2 give two examples of fluids as a combustible okay so which fluids are we talking about so we've got petrol paraffin diesel and oil uh, any of these you can choose uh, to answer your questions using any of this information remember you have uh, information which is related to what you are doing and uh, answers that they expect you to give also okay let's move on to 7.3 a mass of 15 kg of coal is used to heat a boiler in one hour. During the process, 25% of heat is lost. All right, let's see what we have here. We have a mass of coal here. Okay, we have got mass of coal. This is 7.3, which is 15 kgs. All right, so this coal that we are having, what are we given? is used to heat a boiler in one hour so this coal is the one that is heating the boiler in one hour so which means the time that we are given for the process is one hour all right then during the process 25 percent of the heat is lost of during this process 25 percent of the heat was lost okay so let's just write this that 25% of heat was lost. Is lost. So let's just leave this part. We are going to see where we are going to apply it. Okay. So let's see what we are given on the first question. The first question is calculate the amount of heat released. The amount of heat released. So what are we going to do in this case? If you are to cross check, we have to find the energy that you are given from uh, the call because it takes one hour to do this process. But besides this time that we are given, the heat that is released, what is releasing the heat? Let's get back here. Amount, amount of mass the, which is coal is used to heat a boiler. So is the coal that is releasing this heat. So if it is the coal and we've got the mass of coal, we are going to use this formula. Okay, let me write this 3.1. Remember that the energy, that is the heat. When you are given a certain fuel, because this coal is a fuel, we are going to use mass times the heat value of that fuel. Remember the concept. Okay, so now... 25% was lost, but let's start by finding the heat value before 25% was lost. Okay, so energy is mass of coal, which is 15 times the heat value of coal. Okay, so this value, uh, like I always say that you'll be given uh, the values. So let me just show you about the heat value. Of course, this one I have given you for some time, which is 8 megajoules. Okay, the heat value of coal, which is 8 megajoules per kg. So you're going to multiply by 30 megajoules per kg. So if you multiply this, you are going to obtain 450 megajoules. 
all right but take note guys let's not rush this is the energy that we have which is the heat um, that was obtained or which was released but we are told that 25 percent of heat is lost so if we lost 25 percent how much are we left with that is the percentage that we need because remember percentage is out of 100 then we lost 25 percent which means we are going to subtract 25 percent so we are going to be left with 75 percent so the 75 percent is the one that is being released so therefore the energy is going to be 75 percent of this energy that you are given so it's 75 over 100 times 450 megajoules or 0 0.75 times because remember as a decimal is 0 0.75 or as a fraction is 75 over 100 like that so if you multiply these two you're going to obtain 337,5 which is still in mega joules so this is the, actually the energy or the heat which was released so that was the process guys for for this question to obtain um, all the marks there that was what you're supposed to do okay on 7.32 the power developed all right you have the energy you have the time because the time is there so you can actually find the power in an easier way because we know that power is uh, so this is 7.32 7.32 we know that power is equivalent to work done over time which is actually energy over the time which was taken so let's just substitute guys and see what you're going to have the energy this is a uh, 373,5 mega joules mega remember is times 10 to the power 6 if it is kilo kilo is times 10 to the power 3 but m this mega this one is times 10 to the power 6 okay so you've got the energy of 3 just write this number as it is but times 10 to the power 6 okay so this is 337,5 times 10 to the power of 6 or 10 to the exponent of 6 like that then what else do we have we have got the time the time is one hour in this case whenever you're calculating power your time is supposed to be in seconds remember that guys your time is supposed to be in seconds so what's the equivalent of this one hour in seconds we know that one hour in seconds is 3600 so you're going to divide by 3600 which is in seconds so we can use a calculator to divide properly you're going to obtain 93750 which is in which is watts because you're calculating power remember power is measured in watts or someone can convert this to kilowatts if you want uh one two three so it's going to be nine three comma seven five zero kilowatts if you want to convert to kilowatts you can do so or you can just leave your answer like that still you are going to obtain uh, the full number of marks there. So that was uh, the power that was developed. So as you can see, it's a matter of play around with formulas again um, when you are dealing with these questions, if you are to cross-check here. On 7.4, we have the same information, but now related to another thing. Okay, let's see what we are given here. We are given that uh, a welder dropped a steel plate with a mass of 10 kgs and at a temperature of 190 degrees into a container with water which is at a temperature of 20 degrees celsius after the steel plate is dropped into the water the temperature of water rises to 55 degrees celsius take note the temperature of water rises calculate the mass of water all right we have two things here that we are supposed to consider much the steel plate and the water that we have so we dropped a steel plate into a container with water and look at the temperature 109 which means it's 
it's big temperature it's very very hot then when dropped the water was at a temperature of 20 and raised to 55 which means actually this steel plate is losing and the water is gaining there's something that is being gained so the heat from the steel plate is going to reduce that is it is lost while least the water is gaining because the temperature raised which means the heat is gained the energy is gained while least on the steel plate it is being lost so let's see and uh, take the in information uh, properly it's going to help us here we've got two things that we are supposed to measure the best which is the steel plate and the water all right so this is what we have on the steel so on the steel we have got the mass of steel which is 10 kgs so i'm going to write it as ms to represent steel which is 10 kgs all right what else do we have we've got the temperature of 190 degrees celsius 190 degrees celsius which is temperature of steel 190 degrees celsius okay then uh the water the temperature of water is at 20 then it raises to 55 all right so this is the temperature of the water this one okay temperature of water which is 20 degrees celsius then after when it raises to 55 degrees celsius this is now the temperature that is affecting both water and steel because the steel is inside the water so this is no longer the temperature that we can relate to only water but it's affecting both the water and the steel so we can write this as t2 all right which is 55 degrees celsius not uh for what it's not for water but it's for both the steel and the water this one because the steel is now inside the the container with water all right so the question is calculate the mass of water so we need the mass of water here uh, okay so there are two things that you're supposed to actually get here the specific heat capacity of water and also of steel so you've got uh, the specific heat capacity of water this one specific heat capacity of water which is 4187 so it's kilojoules and these ones are joules joules per kg degree celsius okay then we need the specific heat capacity of steel okay so what do we have here the specific heat capacity of steel here specific heat capacity of steel is 500 okay so we have 500 joules per kg degrees celsius like that all right so what am i going to do in this case um in order for me to find the mass of what the mass of uh, water remember the steel there is you are going to have the heat that is lost here the water is gaining so you're going to have heat gained like this okay so heat lost will be equal to heat gained So that means since this is lost, uh, remember heat, uh, the actual formula is mass times the specific heat capacity times the change in what? In temperature. So this is going to be mass of steel, the specific heat capacity of steel times the change in temperature. So the change in temperature here is going to be the temperature of steel minus the temperature of what? Take note, this one is not going to be that way that we actually use it. So it's going to be T S minus T2 because this is lost, which is going to be the one that is gained, which is water. So remember, this one is for water. So it's mass of water, specific heat capacity of water. Then the water is gained. So it's going to be T2 minus T water. So it's T2 minus the temperature of water like that. Okay. So we need the mass of water in this case. So we can substitute our values, uh, which is mass of steel. Okay. Let's substitute. I'm taking this information away. Mass of steel is 10. So it's 10. 
times the specific heat capacity of steel, which is 500. Okay, so it's 500 multiplied by Ts minus T2. So this is the temperature of steel, which is 190 minus T2, which is 55. So it's 190 minus 55, which is equivalent to the mass of water, which is the one that we want to calculate. So we've got the mass of water times the specific heat capacity of water, which is this one, the specific heat capacity of water is 4187. Multiply by the change in temperature T2 minus T water. Temperature 2 minus temperature for water is 55 minus 20. So we've got 55 minus 20 like this. All right. So now you are going to combine everything here. So if you combine everything, it's going to be six, uh, 675,000. Okay, which is going to be, you combine this, you multiply them together you are going to obtain something like one four six five four five times m which is the mass of water so you divide by this value both sides all right divide by one four six five four five both sides you divide also here so this one you just represent on your calculator i'm just showing you what your calculator is supposed to be like so this is the value from your calculator that is the one that you have you must have from your calculator so you're going to obtain the mass of water which is 4,60609 and so on and so on so you can round off to three decimal places if you want uh, which is going to be 4,123 which is 606 because zero cannot change six and this is the mass of water which is measured in kgs so remember that mass is measured in kgs guys okay so that's the step guys very uh it's all about heat lost is equal to heat gained heat lost is equal to what is what is losing the heat and what is gaining the heat that part is very very important that's how they actually ask this uh typical question so you can judge with the marks that are there uh, three marks for that and the total for everything is 11 so you can judge with the question and the number of marks is it uh, appropriate guys do you think it's it's worth it or it's supposed to be some or another way but as i can see it's a, it's a matter of uh, uh, your mathematical skills in applying the change of subject uh, solving equations and so forth as you can see so that's it guys as we are working on revisions from past exam papers and revisions so that we can prepare ourselves for the exams which are ahead of time so that's it guys from Mason african motives till we meet again